the subject, which you all know, is about why we are suffering in this world. Although there is God, and he is a merciful God, a God who loves us, then why the suffering? This is a question which has plagued the minds of people, not only today, but since time immemorial. This doubt has been there in the minds of many. And satisfactory answers were never available till we connect to a realized saint who can present to us the gist of the scriptures to answer this perplexing question. So we are all very, very fortunate here that what I'm going to share with you today as an answer to this very perplexing, mind-boggling question comes from an authority, a great authority of India, as you know from time to time, to guide the whole world. We have had uh, authorities in India called Jagadgurus. So in India so far, although you may hear of so many names, Jagadguru, Jagadguru, this and that, but the truth is that we had only five in original Jagat Gurus, which includes my spiritual master, Jagat Guru Dham, Sri Kripaluji Maharaj. He has come down to the level of common man to explain all the profound truths of Sanatana Dharma and the Vedas. And even this very perplexing question has been answered by him based upon the scriptures in a very logical way. So I request you all to pay attention to each and every word and your doubts on this will be dispelled forever. So the question is, if God exists, and he is a creator of the world, we hear that too then why is there suffering? There is suffering in this world. We all know and we also experience it. There is what you call global suffering. When the whole world goes through it, for instance, you have earthquakes, you have tsunamis, you have tornadoes. And of course, at present, we have the whole world went through a very unbelievable kind of suffering, which we all know as COVID-19, and man is still struggling. It's not ended. So this is suffering on a global level, the whole world. We, we could have never imagined such a thing could happen in this world. And yet it happened. This is global suffering. And then there is suffering on a community level. Plane crashes, train accidents. You have the World Trade Center, terrorist attacks, etc. On a community level. And there is suffering on the individual level. Suffering is an indispensable part of our lives in this world, isn't it? So many different kinds of suffering. There's a big list in the scriptures and we all go through it. I'll just briefly go through the names. There is what you call Tritap Katuk. What is that? Three categories in this. One is Adhyatmik Duk. One is Adi Daivik Duk and one is Adi Bhautik Duk. 
आध्यात्मिक दुख इज ऑफ टू काइंड फिजिकल सफरिंग एंड देर इज मेंटल सफरिंग माइंड इज वेरी पावरफुल इफ यू आर सिक इन द माइंड यू आर श्योर टू एंड अप इथ सम प्रॉब्लम फिजिकली दैट्स वाई वेन यू गुड द डॉक्टर्स इन सम कंप्लेन इट्स ऑल ड्यू टू स्ट्रेस जस्ट एन यू दैट Well, everybody has stress in their lives, isn't it? So, mental suffering. Just think how many people in this world suffered mentally during COVID nineteen. Unbelievable. Fear, fear. It was all pervading in the world, and wherever there is fear, it perpetuates the disease. The disease increases because your immunity level goes down, and therefore you get attacked. Our mind is very, very powerful. It's mind over matter. So suffering on the physical level it starts from the moment we step into the world. How did this? How did we step into the world? Crying. Why did we cry? Because of the pain experienced by that delicate little body when it came out of the mother's womb. From that point, the crying started, and 99.9 percent in this world, they're going to go through this crying from time to time and leave the world crying till they are able to understand the purpose of why they are here and take guidance from a true saint about the scriptures. Then they will be out of this suffering forever. <coughs> so. Then there is adi bhautik duk. Adi bhautik duk is which you get from outside, from people, from animals, etc. You get that as well from other others around you. The behavior of people it affects us, doesn't it? Then suffering from animals, etc. So many different diseases. They've got animal names like now you have monkey pox. Then you had. Swine flu, and then you had bugs, flu. So many different ones. So it's all coming from all over. We are attacked. Then there is Adi Daivik Duk. That is suffering due to natural agents, nature. As I was saying, climatic factors. Some of you know how hot it is in India. Hot winds. Temperatures can go up to forty-eight. So many people can be dying. When it's extreme cold, it's a problem. Extreme hot is a problem. Too much rain is a problem. Too little rain is a problem. So this is nature, suffering due to nature. That also happens to us. If you are paying attention, you would know I've gone through only one category, Tritap ka duk. Apart from that, Tien Shalir ka duk. The suffering due to three bodies. We think we have only this one body, which we are very, very um, aware of, and we take so much care about the body. But we've got two more, and they are the important ones. This body it was born one day; it's going to be dust one day. But the, there will be a body. Two bodies will accompany us when we leave this world. What we call death. There is no thing like death. Some of you have been exposed to these teachings from the Bhagavad Gita. But the soul is immortal. So when we leave, we may have two more bodies. What is that? The subtle body and the causal body. That goes with us, and that's where our karma goes from one life to another. So three bodies. The suffering. Many a times, what happens is some people end up committing suicide. Right? They're going through suffering in life. So when people hear oh, the person committed suicide, then at least the person is now free of suffering. Who said that? No, he's going to suffer more because he took life into his hand. Life was given to him, and the person committed suicide. And suicide is not going to free him of the suffering because that goes along with him. The karma goes along with you. So it's not going to end with end of the body. So three bodies we have. Then we have three kinds of karma: sanjit karma, prarabdh karma, kriyaman karma. Three categories. Sanjit karma is an unlimited 
balance of karma which we have performed ourselves in human life, the backlog, we still have to go through that. That is sanchit karma. Prior of this, the little bit that is given to you in this lifetime, which we call destiny, we call it fate. That little wee bit from that big backlog is given to us to work out in this life and other lives. That's called destiny. And it's inevitable. No point going to astrologers and reading all these books and palmistry. It's not going to change anything because destiny is inevitable. You have to go through it. And then there is Kriya Man Karma. Kriya Man Karma is the privilege of performing fruit yielding action that's going to get us permanently out of the suffering. This is a special privilege of human life. Only human life, remember that. Only one life we have that the doorway is open for us to get out of this cycle of birth and death forever. One opportunity. If we pass by the gate, gone. Gone for how many lifetimes we don't know. So human life is that gate, that gate to get out. An opportunity, a golden opportunity. So this is Kriyaman karma for you. So we have the bondage of three kinds of karma, bondage of three kinds of body, bondage of three gunas. Those moods within your mind, Tamogun, Rajogun, Sattvagun, just listen to the names. I mean, each of them have got sections and subsections. And then there is Pancha Koshka Duk, the five sheets. Then there is Pancha Kleshka Duk, five afflictions. Just listen to the names. I'm not going to go into the details. We've got to cover the topic. So I've just gone through it very, 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 very briefly. If you were to write down all the suffering that each person goes through, in human life, it would be a big book. There's so much we go through. So suffering, as I said, it is an, it's a part and parcel of our lives. Now the question is, if God is merciful, you hear that, don't we? Every scripture, every religion tells us that. Binu karana dina Dayal hitam ramayan kamba dayalum sharanam prajema bhagat puran sharanagata hita bhakta bhat saratuhi kripa rasa sindhu namo even Jainism is saying you are the ocean of mercy of grace Islam Dharma says he is Rahim Karim, which means merciful. There's only one God, remember that. Even all these different forms we have, because we have all got different past, uh, you could say, impressions. So we relate to one form or the other. So we have a wide choice. Some people criticize our Sanatana Dharma. Why do you have so many different gods and goddesses and all that? But do you like uh, everybody in your family has got different likes and dislikes about food? <laughs> they have different likes and dislikes about clothes. Everything we've got different likes and dislikes. And even you yourself, you don't want to have the same food every day, the same thing. So it's human nature that we want a change. And it's not that everybody is going to have the same kind of identification of the supreme being. So we have different forms. So long as you relate and connect to God, that's important. There's only one God. Whether you come from Hinduism or you come from Islam, there's only one supreme being. That's all. So we have to understand this, that you worship one, it amounts to worship of all. Because there's only one. So every religion, look at uh, Christianity, God who is rich in mercy, wherewith he loved us. He's rich in mercy. He's merciful. He's a loving God. And who are we? We are his children. Amritasya vai putra. The Vedas say. They proclaim that. Every religion talks about God as the father. 
doesn't it? So when he is our father, we are his children, and he is a loving God, he is a merciful God, why does he allow us to suffer? How can a father let his children suffer like this? When you read about the suffering, when you see it, lots of people got a chance to see suffering at close quarters during COVID-19. So many people lost their near and dear ones as well, maybe back in India, wherever. So suffering was seen by us at such close. Otherwise it was like it's happening in the neighbor's house, whatever. But intense suffering that the world witnessed to try clear. And God is there. He's merciful. He loves us. Then why this suffering? The whole world suffered. This was a question that uh, you must have heard of Darwin. Darwin, Spencer, Hamilton, they all raised this question. They denied the existence of God on this basis. That if God existed and he created, he is a creator and he's merciful, then how can he let us suffer? That means there is no God. This is how they proved that God does not exist. That was their argument. So now let us once and for all get rid of this doubt. Let us get an answer. Because I'm sure all those of a few are into spirituality, but from time to time, this doubt does cross the mind of people. So that's why I want you to listen very, very carefully to the answer to this important question. The first thing, suffering. The suffering that we go through is all due to our own doing. We ourselves are responsible for the pain and suffering that we go through in life. You must have heard of the saying, what you sow, you reap. Jo karenge, so parenge, whatever you do, you have to go through the consequences. You are responsible. That is the theory of karma. The whole world knows about karma now. Although some of the religions, origin Sanatan Dharma, Buddhism, Jainism, they also talk about karma. But karma has become something that the whole world has now begun to understand. So we ourselves are responsible for our suffering because we have performed the action. Swatantra kriya mane vai krito bhagavata vida. We are independent to perform actions and whatever actions we perform, we have to go through the consequences. So everything that we go through in life in the form of suffering, whatever it is, or the few moments of happiness, this is all our own karma. To blame God for it is ignorance of the law of karma. To be born a beggar or a king, to be born as a cripple or an athlete is all our own karma. It's a consequence of our own karma. All the pain and pleasure that we experience is due to our own karma. Now, again, all the questions that cross your mind and what you have heard, I'm putting before you. We hear of this as well. What you sow, you reap. But at the same time, you also hear, not a leaf stirred without the will of God. Don't we hear that? We also hear that, Umadaru yoshit ki nais 
सबई न चावत राम गुसाई उर प्रेरक रघुवंश विभूषण ही इज द वन हू मेक्स यू टू ब्राह्म यांचा रघुतानी यात्रा रुणाने मायया भगवत गीता एटीन सिक्स्टी वन So, not a leaf stirred without the will of God. We hear that as well. That means, actually, he is the doer. The scriptures are saying that. So, obviously, there's a confusion. On the one hand, it is said that we are responsible for our karma. All the pain and pleasure that we experience is due to us. We are responsible. And on the other hand, not a leaf stirred without the will of God. That means he is the divine. So, let us now <clears throat> use our common sense to understand this. Suppose we think or consider or accept that God is the doer of every action. And what is the definition of God? Suppose the driver of a car were to be all-knowing and to be all-powerful, then would there ever be any accident? No, he would know that when I turn the car this way, one child is going to come running from the other side. I better slow down. He knows it beforehand because he's all-knowing. And then he can stop the car very powerfully because he's all-powerful. Like when you are driving at the speed of 80, 90, suddenly just stop the car, it can overturn. So he's all powerful, he can do everything and he knows what's going to happen next. So therefore, your car, if he were to be your driver, he were to be the driver of your life car, then there would be no accident at all. But suppose the driver were to be a drunk driver and he didn't even have a proper license and he is not all knowing, all powerful. Then accidents are definite, right? Like we, we don't have all the power. We are not all knowing, and we are under the uh, power control of Maya. So therefore, there are accidents in our life. So if God were the doer of our actions, then there would not be anything wrong happening in our life, right? Second argument is that you hear from the Bhagavad Gita itself, Samoham Sarabhuteshu Namit Dveshu Stina Priya, 9.29. Sri Krishna says, I'm equal to all. Neither do I have any enemy nor friend. He's a judge. So when he's equal to all, then if he were the doer of our actions, then he would make everybody do good, right? Because he is a merciful God, he is all powerful. So everyone, all of us would be doing good. But we can see in the world that some people are doing bad, some people are doing good, right? So why does he make some people do bad and some people do good? He cannot be a God who is merciful because he is making some people do bad and then you hear they have to go and pay for their bad actions for their sins and some people he inspires them and they come to him and go to his abode they are freed from all the suffering how can he be favor some and put some into trouble if he's a doer he should make everybody do good isn't it why some doing bad and some doing good Third argument, if God were the doer of our actions, then we also know that just as we said, what you sow you reap, 
So if he's the doer, then he should suffer himself, isn't it? If he's doing anything wrong, he's not doing the right thing, then he should go to suffering himself. Why does he perform action and make us suffer? The fact that we are suffering is our experience. And if he's a doer, how can this happen? Suppose uh, two friends go for a party and one of them overeats. He loves the food, keeps on eating, eating, eating. And what will happen? The indigestion is going to happen to the one who overate. Who's going to want a vomit? <laughs> the person who overate or the other guy? No. The one who overate, isn't it? So he has to suffer. So in the same way, if God is doing all our actions, he should also suffer the consequences of the actions. But he performs the actions and we are suffering. What kind of God is this? Fourth argument. We hear of all the do's and do nots, isn't it? The scriptures have got a list of you, you should do this, you should not do this. If you do this, the wrong thing, you will be punished. Yeah, it's called rules and regulations or in, in our Vedas it is called Vidhi Nishet. The do's and the do nots. So every religion has got do's and do nots. You have the Old Testament of the Bible, it's full of rules only. This to be done, this not to be done. So every religion has got rules and regulations. The do's and do nots. If God were the doer of every action, then what is this list for? Why did he waste his time? Because Vedas, they have come from the breath of God, right? So why did he take all the pains, all the saints took all the pains of putting in writing all these rules and regulations when God himself is the doer? He should have told us, look, you are our free and the doer. The rules and regulations are for me, not for you. So what a waste of time to write all these do-nots and do-nots when he himself is the doer of every action. Now some countries in the world, they are believers, they are what you call astic desh, like India, believing in God. And there are communist countries who do not believe in the existence of God. Now, what happens to criminals in both these countries? Do the countries that believe in God not punish the criminals? Are there no prisons over there? Do they think that, well, we believe in God, so God is the doer of the action. Doesn't matter. You committed a murder, it's not you, it's God who's done it. You, you committed a theft, not you, it's God. Does that happen in such countries? No. All the countries punish the wrongdoers, isn't it? There are prisons, there are courts, there are police in every country. So if God were the doer of actions, then what was the point of all this? So even God has got his ways, he's got his, you hear of hell. When you're the doer of the actions, what is all this about hell? Why do we have to go through hell? And then we go through the different forms of life. Somebody becomes a donkey, somebody becomes a dog. All this is what? This is a form of punishment for our karma. So from these small little logical arguments that are put before you, it's obvious that God is not the doer of our actions. He himself says in the Bhagavad Gita, the Kartritvanna Karmani Lokasya Srijate Prabhu. Fifth chapter, fourteenth verse. Now the take a sajit papam nachainam sukritam vibhu. Bhagavad Gita, fifth chapter, fifteenth verse. I do not interfere with human freedom of action. Whatever you do, good or bad, we are responsible. But as to a question still remains. These same scriptures say, like I was saying, that not a leaf stirreth without the will of God. We cannot move. Everywhere, every scripture talks about the, the will of God, the power of God. So, 
What is the reality? On the one hand, the scriptures are saying, we are free to perform action. And on the other hand, it says that we cannot move at all. Forget us, even a leaf cannot move without his will. Then who is the doer? Is God the doer of our actions or are we the, the doer of our actions? Listen to the answer. God alone is the doer of our actions? Wrong. We alone are the doers of our actions? Wrong. Both are wrong, then what is right? Right is that God is also the doer of actions and we also are the doer. Both. How do we reconcile this? I told you, you will not find the answers anywhere. Whatever I am giving you is coming from an authority, Jagat Guru Tam, Shri Kripaluji Maharaj. All these things that I am explaining, he always teaches in question answer forms. All the doubts that anybody could possibly have, he puts before you. So this is a big doubt. Who is the doer of action? Because the scriptures talk about both things. We cannot move without God's will. And at the same time says, Swatantra Kriya Mane Vai, you are independent to perform action. So now listen to the answer. Krita prayatno pekshas to vivita pratishiddha vayartha divya. God gives us the power to perform action. Without his power, we would be like dead people. So he gives us the power to do and we with that power are free to do what we desire to do. The power is from him to do. We have a couple of mantras in the Keno Prishan it says Yadvacha na bhyutitam yena vaga bhyutyate tavitta deva brahma tomvitti nedam yadidam pasate yad chakshushana pashati yena chakshu vamshi pashati tad deva brahma tomvitti nedam yadidam pasate yad pranena na praniti yena prana praniyate tad deva brahma tomvitti nedam yadidam pasate this is all from the Keno Prishad mantra 1 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Each mantra is telling you that without his power, you cannot see. He gives the power to see to the eyes. He gives the power to hear to the ears. He gives the power of thinking to the mind. He gives the power. The power comes from him. But what, how we are going to utilize the power is up to us. Let me give you a few examples. You see trees, plants, creepers in the world, right? So many different grains, so many different flowers, so many different fruits, all different trees around, right? Now, even on the mountains, high up in the mountains, who goes to plant those trees over there? So now the difference that you see, some are beautiful flowers, fragrant, and some can be like cactus. You know, people keep them at home as decoration pieces. The thorns over there. And then there are some trees which have got natural fragrance. Sandalwood tree. And there is a tree which is like, um, what is it called? I forgot in English. Bichu ghas. It's like if you accidentally touch that grass, it's like the bite of a scorpion. It hurts that much. So all these differences that you see, in this uh, world of nature, 
what is the reason? You will obviously say that it is the seed. Some trees, they give very sweet fruits. Some fruits are sour and some fruits can be poisonous as well. So much difference. So why is the difference there? It's due to the seed. Right? But if that seed, say for instance, there is a there is a seed of rice or wheat, and it is in a, in a bag. You know, you have sacks of grains, right? The seeds are all there. Does the tree come out? The, those grains may be there in that sack for years together, but there will be no tree, no plant coming out. Why? Because that seed needs water and sunshine, isn't it? It's when you plant that seed in the garden or wherever, then there has to be some rain, some sunshine, then the seed sprouts. Even in your home, sometimes you have that grain, uh, moong dal. You just put it in water and overnight it will sprout. But it needed water. If it is in the packet, they sell it in packets, then you will have all kinds of plants coming out within the sack itself. No, you have, it needs water. It needs sometimes sunshine. So this water, this sunshine is the power of God. Without that, those seeds are not going to sprout, right? Even in your garden, the water rains equally on all the plants that you have put there. But what comes out is different. Why? Because the difference lies in the seed itself, but water Sunshine is indispensable. The water is there for all the seeds equally, but what comes out lies within the seed itself. So similarly, our actions are different. God gives us the power to do, but what we are going to do, it all depends upon ourselves. So the seeds are there, but they will sprout only with water. So water is indispensable. You cannot do without it. That water is a power of God. We need the power of God to perform any action. We can take some other examples as well. We all have electricity in the houses, right? And everybody makes different uses of electricity mainly for light. Some people use it for cooling. If it's hot, you use an AC. If it is uh, cold, and then you probably have a heater. You can use that electricity for ironing. You can use that electricity for washing. You can use the electricity for various different purposes and each person uses it according to their own needs and standard as well, right? Some people can only afford in India, they can afford electricity only for probably light, maybe one light bulb. They cannot even afford a fan. So the electricity is being provided to you and you are going to make use of that electricity according to your needs. You can use electricity to go up, you can see those escalators. You can use it to come down. You can use the, like, this electricity to harness from water and produce electricity. So there are so many multifarious uses that we can have from electricity. Now that electricity, I don't know whether you'll be able to understand the complete example. Now suppose there's an exposed wire in the house. Usually you have all here in this part of the world, this all concealed inside. They always put the fittings within. You don't see any exposed wire. But suppose there is in some part of the house an exposed wire and you accidentally touch it. What will happen? Electric shock, right? 
Now some person wants to commit suicide and he's thinking, what should I do, what should I do? Then he knows that an exposed wire, if I hold it, then I'll die of the shock. So let me die comfortably. I'll sit on my sofa at home and hold on to an exposed wire of electricity and there I go. Now suppose a person who's dying of shock through electricity complains that this electricity is responsible for my death. How far is he right? Who, who, who asked you to hold on to that exposed wire? That electricity was provided in your house for your benefit. But if you're going to misuse it, it was there for your use. Everybody benefits. Can you imagine life without electricity today? Many hundred years back, there was no electricity, right? Today, we cannot even imagine the light. Suppose the lights were to go out. It's like, it's almost like an end of the world for you. We are so used to it. So the electricity is there, purely for our benefit. But if you are going to misuse it, then who is responsible for it? We ourselves are responsible. We cannot blame that electricity. Same is the case with the power that God gives us to perform action. Without that power, we cannot do anything. We cannot see, we cannot hear, we cannot think, nothing. But that power is not responsible for what you're doing. The power is there for your benefit. We have rivers in the world. Now, in this part of the world, the rivers may not have such multifarious uses, but in India, you know, a river is used for many purposes. People can bathe in the rivers, Ganges, how many millions go and bathe over there during the Kumbh Mela. So people bathe in the river, they wash their clothes in the river, and somebody, some people even, you know, throw their half-burnt bodies of people are thrown into the river. All sorts of things happen. The river is to put so many uses. Now, it can also be misused. Like some person pushes another person into the water. He knows he, he doesn't know swimming, so I want to kill him. So they pushed him into the water. So you are committing a murder. Or if somebody herself or himself wants to commit suicide and just jumps into the river, right? committed suicide. Now, are you going to blame that river for that? No. River is a necessary part of our life in the world. It's there to give you water, it's there to give so many multifarious, the trees around, they grow. And here we are using that same river for something so negative. So that river is not responsible. It is we who are responsible. A revolver, a license is given to a person who is in the police or in the army. He's got a revolver for that. And suppose he uses that same revolver. It is, meant, it is given to him to maintain law and order. And he uses the same revolver to kill himself. Who is responsible? The person who gave him the revolver and the license? You yourself are responsible. So all these examples are enough for us to understand the role of God. When it says that without his power we cannot move, the purpose of saying that is that he gives you the power to do. What we are going to do depends upon ourselves. He's given you the power to see right? Now, with your eyes, what are you going to see? Are you going to read some spiritual book? Or are you going to read a book about crime? Or are you going to watch a TV program? You see, there are so many programs on the TV. 24 hours is there. Each person is going to connect to a program which they want to. So, the TV is not responsible. You're going to choose what you want to see, isn't it? 
The choice is there for you. So what you're going to see with your eyes, what am I going to hear with my ears? Right now you're sitting to hear, get the right knowledge about what suffering there is in the world and it's based upon the scriptures. You can listen to positivity or you can listen to negativity. The ears are there. The ears are there for everyone. But what you are going to listen to, it depends upon you. Same thing applies to the tongue. The tongue has got double function, isn't it? Maharaji, my spiritual master says that 90% of, of the distress, the unhappiness in the world is due to this tongue. What we speak. You see, something said with the tongue is an arrow which has gone out. It will not come back. So words can kill more than a sword can kill. That's how powerful words are. So what you're going to speak with your mouth are you going to say something loving? Or are you going to say something which hurts? The tongue is there for you, but what you are going to speak, that is up to you. The same thing is what you eat. If you are going to eat something that's going to be harmful for your body, because it's tasty. You know, most of the things that are harmful for the body are tasty. All those great chocolates and ice creams and things like that. All the fried food. It's enjoyable, but it's harmful. Now, what you're going to use at this? So what kind of food are you going to eat? Are you going to eat sattvic food? Food that is good for the body? Are you going to eat rajasic food? Which is spicy and which is um, fried, etc. That is rajasic food. And then there's tamasic food. All the non-vegetarian kind of food that you're going to eat, which is going to have an impact on your mind. You see, food has an impact on the mind. Just remember that. We think it's okay, I'm just eating. It doesn't matter. It's going to make up. Because the food is divided into three parts. Listen carefully. One part of the food goes to make up the body. Your blood, your muscle, your bones, etc. One part of the food it's thrown out as waste matter and the subtle part of food makes up your mind, your thoughts. So food has an impact on the mind. So we have a tongue. What we are going to choose to eat is up to us. Everything is available for you, but the choice is yours. Same is the thing with thinking. Thinking, thinking is very, very powerful. Sri Krishna says, Vishayan dhyayatas chittam vishayeshu vishajjate ma manusmaratas chittam mayeva praviliyate. If you think about, you contemplate on me, you will come to me. If you think about the world, you contemplate on the world, you will attain the world, whatever it may be. Thinking is so powerful, so powerful. So what we are going to think, it depends upon us. The instrument is there, the power to think is there. Then the power to decide. You all have made a decision to come over here today. There were other people who knew about this talk. The word was spread around. Oh, well, I just... Today, let me relax. Most of the people now, I mean, especially with this, you know, relaxation of COVID rules, they're out on time. When I came this morning, the airport was packed with people. Everybody's running in all directions. Holiday, holiday, holiday. <laughs> and even those who haven't gone for a holiday are in Dublin. They thought, should I go, should I not go? Should I go, should I not go? Decision was made. Okay, I'll go. Let's go. Let's hear something. You might get the answer to the question that we were all bothered about. That if there's God, why is there suffering? So you decided to come. And there were people who decided and thought, okay, we'll see. I saw that the talk is there even next Saturday. But let me tell you, this is all connected. You cannot, if you haven't heard one part of it, you won't understand the other part. 
There is a question answer session. So this session is yours when you got an opportunity to come and listen. You were not forced into some blind belief. You were given something logical, something to understand. Because we will never move forward. Because even in this COVID time, some people just complain and complain. They became negative. Some people became atheists. And some people prayed and became spiritual. See, it happened all over the world. But the reaction of people was different. According to understanding, their thinking, their decisions. So decision, the power to decide is given by God. What we are going to decide, it depends upon you. The sun shines equally on charcoal and the diamond. But the diamond reflects the light and the charcoal doesn't. The light, that power to perform action is given by God. But what we are going to do with that power, what we are going to see, what we are going to hear, what we are going to speak, what we are going to think, what we are going to decide, you have the freedom of action. We cannot blame God for that. So understanding this important question, how God also performs action, we also, this is the reconciliation. Sri Maharaji got this degree from the Kashi Vidvat Parishad when he was only 34 years that he is Nikhil Darshan Samanvayacharya. All the contradictory things, because the scriptures say both. Brahmayat Sarvabhutani Yantra Rudani Mayaya Shri Krishna is saying in the Gita that he moves. He is inside you. Ishwara Sarvabhutana Hridde Shetimatishtati 1861 He resides within each person. And at the same time I don't do anything. Nakatritvam Nakarmani Loka Srijatik Prabhu I do not do anything. I do not interfere with your freedom of action. So you have both these contradictory things, not one, but many things. One act, it is said that God is formless and people fight religions. He's only formless. Other hand, no, he has a form. Or it's a reality. So we have hundreds of such contradictions which he has reconciled and he has made them understandable to the common man based upon the profound knowledge which is in the scriptures. So I suppose you have now understood this, that we ourselves are responsible for the suffering that we go through. It has not got anything to do with God. Our karma, he gives us the power to do. Because if he didn't give the power, then nobody would have become a Guru Nanak Dev or nobody would have become Tulsi Das or Sudas or any saint. He gave the power to do and they did what was declared in the scriptures as the way out of this cycle of birth and death. So they came out. So we too also have the opportunity. In human life, you can rise to the divine or you can go down to anima. It all depends upon our karma. So you mean to say that's the only role of God? He gives us the power to do? Yes, he gives you the power to do and also all that we do Who's going to decide what is going to be the consequence of your action? Because if we were given the authority to note down our actions and give the consequences, we would only note down the good ones. Who wants to go through the bad? Nobody wants to. No, he is the one. Every moment he's watching. Sakshi Cheta Kevarunasha. He is a witness of your every action. Nothing is private. What we think, he is noting down immediately. So it's a 24 hour camera on you. Those video cameras on the, the speed ones, we know where they are. So the moment we pass, we pick up speed. When it's coming, you go down to the proper speed. It's not like that. Here it's a 24 hour camera watching you. So, he is the one who notes down and he gives you the fruits of those actions. 
Good actions, good truth, bad actions, bad. Right? Now, our question is, granted that he gives the consequence of our actions, we don't have any objections when he gives us the good fruit of our good actions. Our objection is, why does he give the fruits of our bad actions? Because bad actions we have to suffer and we are suffering. If he is a merciful God, if he is our father, we are his children, then why does he make us suffer? That's the question. Would a father in the world want his son to suffer? No. He would do everything that is possible to help to relieve the suffering of his son, isn't it? He wouldn't want him to suffer in the one first place. A parent wouldn't want that. And if the person, the child is going through suffering, they do everything to be able to relieve that suffering. Now you, you who are <coughs> our father, you have been watching the whole world suffering through this COVID-19. What did you do? You could have prevented it. You are all powerful. Why did you allow us? You, you say, it's your karma? Yeah, okay, granted it's our karma. But you are a father. You are Dayalu, you are Kripalu, you are merciful. Why did you allow this suffering to come to us? So yes, now we have come to the second part of the question. We have understood one part of it, that whatever happens in our life is due to our own karma. Whether it's good or bad, we are responsible. And if we complain about it, we blame God, it's ignorance of the law of karma. But our other question is, granted that we have done the wrong things, we have done bad, but when he is compassionate, he is merciful, and we are his children, then he should do something about our suffering. We go through so much intense suffering, sometimes we cannot even live. It's so unbearable. We see people, or we might have personally gone through such suffering. So he is our father. God is there. He has created. Why doesn't he do anything to change that? Why does he just sit and watch people in earthquake dying, people dying in tsunamis, tornadoes, and this, you could say, in floods, in famines. All that is happening. So why doesn't he do anything about it? Your question? Yes, he does. I'll just tell you that for today. We don't know what he does, but he does much more than any parent in the world can do for his child. We don't know what he does because I'm going to come to that. Not today, but next Saturday. But till you start thinking what, 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 I just want to tell you that much, that he does for us. He cares for us more than anyone in the world can care for us, but we do not know. We need to know, and that knowing will happen, not today, but as you know, the talk will continue next Saturday. Till then, we can think that he is still merciful. Don't think of him as cruel. He is merciful. He cares for us. Be positive about it, and we will get that love and grace.